This presentation will visually document how I like to line or print and the steps I took throughout the process, including easier transfer or methods of working. I will show alternative tools within the household that you can use to aid the printing process. The equipment needed are as follows. Water-based block printing ink, printing rollers, line or carving tools, willow charcoal, graphite pencils, biro pens, linoleum, which can be either soft cut or hessian backed, an inking tray or a glass or plastic surface, cartridge paper, a putty based rubber or a regular rubber, alongside a flat weighted object such as a pint glass or a baron. The weighted tools will be used as a makeshift manual press for you to work at home. Here is the cleaning up equipment you will need during the inking process. Newsprint blotting paper, kitchen roll, a dish bowl or cup of water that's mixed with washing up liquid and sponges. You'll need to use washing up liquid mixed in with water to remove the ink from each of your blocks as the ink itself is water-based and washing up liquid is the only way for removal. There are two formats of linoleum blocks that you can purchase, soft cut and hessian backed. Soft cut is a great surface to carve into without a heavy hand. If you were to vigorously carve into the soft cut lino, you will likely penetrate the backing Due to this, I myself fear the hessian backed lino. In addition to providing another surface to barricade the backing, hessian backed lino provides further stability when pressing your block. The hessian reinforces the linoleum and disallows too much malleability within the block. Though I recommend hessian backed lino, you will have to take a further step in your process by warming up the lino on a radiator. For a first time carver, soft cut lino may be the best choice for you, but if you're quite heavy handed and would rather the reinforcement, I suggest that you go for hessian backed linoleum. Creating a design to reference from is imperative to the printmaking process. I had opted for illustrating a hybrid photo montage digital drawing, inspired by the imagery of Pan's Labyrinth. Having a visual aid allows you to plan for skill and the overall narrative of the drawing without risk of becoming convoluted. The equipment needed for the carbon transfer are a graphite pencil, a biro pen, and willow charcoal or graphite paper. So here I am showing you the general process of carbon transfers and how they work. Working in conjunction to the monoprinting process, the carbon transfer method, especially if you have graphite paper on hand, can be repeated more than once. Unfortunately, unless you are fond of mess, carbon transferring cannot be completed more than once using charcoal. I favour the carbon transfer of drawings as I am prone to making mistakes and working in this way eliminates the destruction of the final facet and instead allows you to plan for your drawing and copy it onto the desired surface. I have drawn something and I have backed it with a layer of charcoal, which I am then flipping over onto a plain surface. So in this case, it is paper, but on the next slide, I am using this process on some linoleum so that I can transfer my drawing over to the surface that I will be carving into and later printing. So you don't want to have your hand too heavy on the whatever surface you're copying your design onto as whatever you're using to transfer the design over is going to imprint onto that surface. So you want to have as light of a hand as you can and make sure that you copy every aspect of the design 
that you have. And as you can see, that's what I'm doing here. And you just keep going until it's done. Absolutely make sure it's done. Peel back and there you can see a carbon transfer has been impressed upon the surface. And that is the final result. I'm currently showing you my scrap piece of lino, which unfortunately was the only piece that I had available within my fortier. And I'm measuring it out on a piece of paper, which I will then downsize my reference image and I'm beginning the drawing process. And I'm taking my time with this process because this isn't the final surface and I can make decisions on the composition and additional assets I would like to add to the drawing, which I did decide to do, including extra tentacles and eyes. And I don't have the risk of creating a mess or ruining this, the final surface because this is just a drawing on some paper that Later on, using the carbon printing method, I will transfer over to my lino and just trace over it. So we can do whatever we want to do. And as you can see, I'm making mistakes. I'm a normal person and I'm having to rub things out. And if I was doing this on the linoleum after so many times of rubbing out, the linoleum would become distressed and the initial surface of the linoleum would be ruined. So we don't want to do that. So I'm I'm keeping on, I'm marching on, I'm getting this drawing done. The final drawing is done. I'm then backing it up with a layer of charcoal, which I'm then tracing over the final image. And I'm meticulously going over every single elevation, angle and possible element of the drawing that I can see. And I'm ensuring that everything is done, lifting it up, making sure it's transferred because there's nothing worse than doing this full process for it not to transfer. And I'm reinforcing the initial transfer with Biro and I would recommend Biro rather than felt tip as felt tip can bleed and smear. And this is so I can clean off the charcoal using a rubber without distressing the liner too much. And I can see very clearly where it is that I need to carve and what I'm going to do, because I need that structure within my process. I need to be able to see, and there it is. And on the radiator for five minutes, because this it is hessian-backed um, linoleum, which is a lot more harder than soft-cut linoleum, so we need it to be warmed prior to carving. And here I am beginning the carving process and just gouging into the lino and being careful to have the gouge go away from my hand as I carve. You can interchange the blade of your carving tool with whatever width you see fit and find to be more comfortable. I prefer to carve using the smallest gouge, which is 0.5. I find every other blade unless working on a larger scale to be harder to control. I recommend testing each build on a scrap piece of lino to find which suits you best. Keep in mind that a build which exhibits more control should be favoured in more intricate and smaller scaled designs, rather than a large build that takes away more surface area than necessary and tends to slide more. So you want to practice carving first before you jump into the deep end. So create test designs milking a range of marks. You don't need to worry about milking a recognisable image and you can just play around and milk as many different shaped cuts as you can, like lines, dots, dashes, etc. Make sure you utilise the blades that you have within your set because these blades may be a V gouge or a U gouge, large and small. So use all that you have and see what kind of different mark you can get from each of those tools. Learn how to control the tool. You control the tool by the angle that you hold it at. 
So holding it at a steeper angle makes the cutting edge go deeper. Holding it at a shallow angle brings the cutting edge up. With practice, you should be able to carve a continuous line by finding the right angle. If you do keep slipping, lift the handle slightly to make a steeper angle. I would suggest drawing your image out in ink first or using the carbon uh, transfer method and draw it out in black ink to help you visualise what the print will look when it's blocked out. Carve away from your hand, you do not want any injuries and you want to try and prevent cutting yourself. So carve away from your hand or at least at a distance. If you can carve on a non-slip surface, you can get um, non-slip mats from the pound shop as well as Velcro stickers to put on boards and such to work on. Make sure you're moving the lino around so it's less effort for you to have to carve around the lino. The lino is moving wherever you want to move it to. So this makes your carving life a lot easier. So try to utilise movement of the lino and keep it moving because you shouldn't be the only variable that puts in the work. The lino should be too. So keep it moving. And lastly, be sure to take frequent breaks as carving lino does take an immense amount of concentration. And the last thing you want is to be injuring yourself because you haven't rested properly. Here is a photograph of the final carved piece of linoleum prior to inking it up. I've included another lino block that I had carved prior to creating this presentation. And this block will be used to show you how to block print using gradients. In the next few clips, I will be showing you my process in how to go about inking your blocks through the use of solid colour and creating a gradient. Now to start off with, I'm applying some water-based ink into my plastic trail which I'm just about to start spreading out with my roller. Now you want to try and spread the ink out as much as you possibly can because you don't want the ink to congeal and gather up onto the roller. You want it to be a seamless, slick application. Now, as you're going about rolling the ink, I want you to try and peer mind to how much noise the ink is making. If the ink is making quite a lot of noise, this means there is far too much ink on there and you need to keep rolling it out. Once you feel that there is little to no noise, start applying it to your block like I am here. And make sure that every part of the block is covered. You'll notice if you have a block which has quite a bit of negative space like this one does, i.e. meaning there's a lot more pilge to see through rather than block. You'll notice that some parts that are slightly more raised from being gouged will get a little bit of ink on them and that can be frustrating but it can be touched up later on 
when you're fine tuning your work. So now I'm selecting what paper I want to print the image onto and I've gone for a standard ear free multi medium um, paper and I'm just going to arrange my paper onto a hardened flat surface and then I put the block down onto the paper and I use my hands to press onto it a little bit just to secure it onto the paper and carefully slip it on. I then start rubbing the base of a pint glass onto the backing and I just keep doing that until I feel fit and eventually you will peek at the corners of your design as you've pressed it yourself to see what areas need to be pressed on more and how you can do that. So we have our first initial print. And you just want to keep going with that process. You'll find as you keep going that you'll become more comfortable with the ink application and you'll feel a lot more accustomed to the way that the ink reacts and how you can roll it out better. And you'll just generally become attuned to the way the printing ink works. So as you have just seen, I'm about to show you how to create a gradient using water-based inks for your line or printing. Now you want the inks to set apart from each other as far as you can get them. Unfortunately, I'm confined to a small plastic trail, whereas you may have a full plastic surface or a full glass surface at your hand. So utilise that space. The more spills that you have, the more seamless of a blend you can get. Now you want to use a larger roller for this. And the reason for this is because with a larger roller on a smaller block print, the better effect of the blend you will get. So if you have an ear five block, you need to use a roller that's almost the width, if not the exact width, of an ear 4 roller or even bigger the bigger the better so keep rolling out the ink until you get the desired blend that you want for me it took me quite a while because i wasn't quite happy with the red blending into the black and you can experiment with as much ink as you want just be careful in rendering the piece and do not flip your roller Keep it exactly the same. Sometimes lift up, pull down, lift up, pull down. Make that blend as seamless and as linear as you can get it. Remember, if the ink is making too much noise, you have far too much ink and you need to remove some ink. Now I'm quite happy with the gradient that I've got, so I'm going to start inking up the plate and I'm doing that now. And I'm going to do a few quick swipes, all in the same direction. I'm not going up or down because I don't want the blend to blend even more. I'm happy with the way that the colours have 
merged together and I'm satisfied with the result. So I'm setting my paper down. I'm giving you a sneak peek at the print prior to the uh, final printing. And you want to place that down on the paper as carefully as you can and press down, apply pressure, but not too much pressure and be careful not to move as you will cause the print to lessen in its boldness because there will be signs of it being moved. So make sure you're holding the plate as you're using whatever weighted tool to press the print down. I like to rub the print with the, my hand on the back just to ensure that it's okay. I'm peeling it back slowly. Do not do this quickly as you may ruin the print. And there we go. That is how you get a gradient. So if you aren't one for visually learning and you'd much rather a very linear black and white plan, I have the full methodology of printmaking available here. And this includes how to make a gradient. Though I do suggest you refer to what equipment you need and maybe just glance at the videos just so you can be sure on how to apply the mediums to the surfaces. Thank you very much for listening and I hope you have fun print milking.